Gracie, Gracie, you got everything set out so we can make our holiday pot roast tonight? Boy, I hope you do, because I'm getting hungry. What about you? Oh, let's head on in here and see what Gracie's got all laid out. Woo! Looks right there. She got her chuck roast. Yep, she does. She loves her beef. Oh, she got some celery there. I think we'll be using two stalks of that. Some fine carrots. Yeah, three or four of them will be nice. Oh, some dull russet potatoes. Three of those or more. Whatever will fit in our cast iron. Dutch oven will do us. A couple of onions. And let's see what she's got back here lined up. Oh, she's got out. She's going fancy tonight because it's the holidays. Yep, Himalayan pink salt. Yep, she's getting festive. She's got out the pure ground black pepper. Some McCormick's minced garlic. Oh, yeah, the Worcestershire sauce. Woo, oh, I know she's getting fancy because she's got out the toasted sesame oil. You see, you can use olive oil or any oil you want. But that toasted sesame oil gives it an earthy, nutty flavor that you may have never enjoyed. Try it out sometime, and you'll be hooked too. And of course, she's got some of the herb ox beef bouillon. We'll probably be using a couple of them too to add a little more of that beef flavor to our roast beef. Cream of mushroom soup. Oh, now that's going to make some fine gravy. Yes, it will. And then some of the Giorgio. 8 ounce can of mushrooms, pieces and stems. And for a little more added seasoning, she's got thyme leaves and rosemary too. Oh, and then she's got out her favorite cooking vessel, our new croissant. Cast iron, Dutch oven too. So yeah, she got a measuring cup out. She's got my measuring spoons out. I think she's got it all. So hey, we got some work to do. Yes, we do. Well, now that she's got everything set out, I've got to get slicing, dicing, and cutting things up. Yep. I wonder if she'll help me. You know, she's got that whole no thumbs thing going on. But I think she can handle the celery. All right. And she always helps. Oh, well, hello there again, friend and family. So glad to see you back in the little old country kitchen. And as you saw, Grace has got everything pulled out. Yeah, my little princess, my little sous chef, she's done her job quite well. So since y'all snuck by the kitty crew, and of course Gracie too, of course, as always, you're tricking them with treats. I know all y'all. We got to get to work here. And we got to get preparing all this because that's the one thing you need to know. If you're a new cook or a youngin', Get all your prep done first before you start putting it all together and get cooking on. So yeah, I'll get Gracie's help. We'll get this all done up there, all our prep work, and then we'll come back and we'll show you how to make a holiday pot roast. Well, looky there. With the help of Gracie, my little kitty sous chef, we got the vegetables all cut up. Yeah, in nice sized chunks, as you can see, about an inch to about an inch and a quarter or half. You can cut them to any size you want. And then she's got all those onions chopped up. Well, here's about the same, about an inch to an inch and a half. And this might be too many vegetables to go in the old Lou Croissant Dutch oven there. But whatever we have left. We'll throw an old Ziploc bag and put it in the freezer to use at a later time. But we got another step of prep before we're ready to start getting that wonderful little chuck roast. Roasting in the oven. And what might that be? Well, we got to start the sauce, which makes this holiday roast such a special one to put on your plate or dining room table that is so let's get to making 
the sauce before we go to the next step, which will start the cooking of the holiday pot roast. Now first what we got to do is we got to melt our bouillon. We've got a little Pyrex uh, cup here, measuring cup. We're going to place in two beef bouillon cubes. Let me add a little bit of filtered water to this. So, as you can plainly see, we've got the bouillon cubes and a cup of water. We're going to pop it in the microwave for about one minute. So these can be pre-softening. So we can add them to our sauce. So, we stuck it in for a minute and you can plainly see the beef bouillon cubes are starting to dissolve in that nice steaming hot water in our Pyrex measuring cup. And we'll just set it right there. And we got to get us out a spatula to get out the soup. So all we're going to do with the soup is try to get it out of this can. Boom. Yep, it's sort of like soup pudding, you know what I mean? Most of it comes right out. If you can get it to plop out, and of course, we're going to scrape every bit of deliciousness out of this can with grocery prices where they are. We don't want to leave any in the can. If we can help it, that's pretty much it. But we'll take our hot water bouillon broth, pour it right on in that can, and let it sit. It'll dissolve any of that cream mushroom soup that's left in the can. So there we go. Now we're going to add a couple of tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. That's really going to knock the flavor right on up. And that's a level tablespoon. Not sure how you could get a liquid to go over that. So there is one. Now we're going to put two. And we're going to plop that on in. Woo, I love the smell. Worcestershire sauce. And then, just to make it a little more flavorful, we're just going to add a little bit of thyme. Some sprinkles, you know. And some of this festive rosemary. Just a few sprinkles. Maybe a quarter of a teaspoon. Now we're ready to add in that one cup of beef bouillon broth. We're going to slosh it around and get all that goodness out. Ooh. There it comes. Now look at how clean that can is. You see that? That's not wasting any food, young ones. And then we're just going to start letting it mix up. Start dissolving in the beef broth. Now you can use beef broth out of one of them cartons or cans. And if you can find it, which has been rather slim of late, woo, get some of that Campbell's beef consomme. That'll really kick up the beef flavor in this dish. And then we've got our can here, Giorgio's. I guess you pronounce that that way. Pieces and stems, mushrooms that is.
let me give this can just a little bit of a drain. And now, to our sauce, we're going to add in about half of this can. Remember, it's an 8-ounce can. Ooh. Can you see those luscious mushrooms from Giorgio? Ooh, they're so good. So, like I say, about four ounces. If you want more or less, you can do that too. We'll just mix them on it. Just like that. We're going to set that aside too. So now on to prepping our meat to make it all nice. So now it's time to season up our chuck roast. And you can plainly see that we cut it in half. Yes, we did. In fact, we bought this in September of 2022 on manager special. It was a little bit over two pounds. And this section is a pound and four ounces. And that's going to affect your cooking time. We'll talk about that as we go. And I'm just going to sprinkle on some pure ground black pepper generously, right like that. Cover it up good. And we're going to just use some fine Morton salt. But what about the pink salt, Mr. Tom? Well, we got that for a little later on. There we go. We're just going to give it a flip. Right there. Add a little bit more of that pepper to this side too. It'll be okay. And some salt. Generously. So we've got our meat all seasoned up. And we've got our cast iron enamel that is Dutch oven preheat which you've got to do and we've got it set on medium to medium high so let me get this over on the stove we'll take off the lid and move you on over where you can see what we got to do so to our preheated enamel cast iron Dutch oven we're gonna add a tablespoon or two of this fine toasted sesame oil. You can use olive oil, canola oil, sunflower oil, peanut oil, whatever you want to. But if you've never tried the sesame seed oil, I challenge you to because it does add a very earthy, nutty flavor to your meat. And it's used a lot in Asian cooking, too. And we're going to let that heat up, that oil, and get nice and hot. Because we're going to be searing some meat here. Now, do you have to sear your roast? Well, my mama never did. Or my grandmother or great-grand. But I've learned by browning my roast, it adds a whole other level of flavor that you miss out on if you don't. So now we're ready to place it right on in here. Ooh, listen to the sizzle, because that's what you want to hear. Did you hear that? Maybe you can't. And here's another thing. I know many of you that made it this far are probably going to say, well, I do this in my crock pot. I sear my meat. And I make my roast in my crock pot, and I have too. But being, you know, a little old guy, an engineer, and I'm sort of lazy, well, I got to dirty up a pan, sear the roast, and then transfer it into the crock pot. So now I got two things to wash. I'm a one pot kind of guy, 
if I can get away with it. Now we're going to let this here sear without messing with it for right around four to five minutes. And that's the trick. Don't get impatient. Look at your clock. Yeah. Because if you move it too fast, it's going to want to stick. And then all that brown goodness is going to be on the bottom of your pan. So, just watch that and listen to the sound of that sizzling roast. It's music to my ears. Well, there you have it. It's been about five minutes. Let's see. Does that move around? Oh, look at that. Look at that. It moves so easily. Woo! She's a sizzling away. Now we got to turn it on over. Woo! Looky there, looky there. I'm telling you what. Five minutes is the magic number. Let me just let you get a close gander at this. Can you see that right there? That's a whole bunch of brown goodness. Another added level of flavor. That you might not do, but you should. So now it's been another five minutes on the opposite side. Let's see what we got. Yep, it moves quite easily. Woo, look at there. So let's bring that out to the plate because what we're going to do next is we're going to add a few onions in there to caramelize and all that nice hot oil because that's what we're going to set that roast down on. Ooh, yeah. That's going to infuse some flavor in it. We didn't add them all. We just added some. We just stir them around while we're scraping up some of those bits from the bottom and searing our meat. Ooh, yeah, baby. Now, as you cook the onion a little, we lay our roast on in well, about you know about four to five minutes should do it and add some of that toasted sesame seed oil goodness to some of these onions it's going to make some gravy that is going to be the star of this show too not only the roast and the veg with the gravy which we're going to make a lot of that too comes in quite handy There's several other things you can do like you'll probably remember when we were growing up there were times things were so hard and money was so slim sometimes all the ladies could do in my family was to make up some gravy some, some meat scraps and what have you and maybe some onion and garlic too and then we'd have that over white bread toasted bread biscuits and on a rare occasion even some cornbread maybe your mothers or grandparents did that too when money was tight and food was low at the end of the month Especially if your father, like mine, was in the service and got paid monthly. We only went grocery shopping at the first of the month after Dad's pay came in. But you just want to get some caramelization and browning on those onions for a base. Mm -mm -mm. The, the smell and the flavor of those onions. That toasted sesame oil is really, really good. Now we're going to add in a little bit of our McCormick's mixed garlic. 
minced garlic, that is. I would say about, oh, maybe a half a teaspoonful. Now we got our onions and our garlic all in there for a nice base to put a roast down on. Let me show it to you. So there's what you have. You see how the edges are just turning brown? That's good enough because more caramelization and therefore that sugary sweet flavor of the onions will come out during the roasting of the chuck roast. So now we'll just turn the heat way down low. Add back the chuck roast. Right on top of all that goodness. Right there. Right down on that bed of onion. Yes, we did. Just to give it a little more flavor for now. We're going to add a few more of these onions in all around. I love onion. Yes, I do. We're going to save some back to lay on top of our veg and mix it all in to flavor it too. Now we got to add our sauce for the next step. Now, here we have our Cream of mushroom soup, Worcestershire or sour sauce. Those beautiful Giorgio mushrooms, pieces and stems. A little thyme and rosemary. We're going to pour it right in on top. Ooh, and it's this right step right here. That Grandma Thompson said it made it. The holiday pot roast. In all reality, this is often referred to as a smothered chuck roast, southern style. But instead of saying that long title, after a while, we just called it the holiday pot roast. So this is what you got now. See it right there? Surrounded in those nice, white, bright Spanish onions all cradled around cream mushroom soup Worcestershire shire sauce thyme rosemary Woo, with some black pepper and salt now it's ready to go in the oven yep we're not putting the veg in because they'll overcook we're going to set it in our 325 degree yep preheated oven and here's where the trick comes in Based on your size of roast, your cooking time will be different. But we'll tell you how to check it with a calibrated pork. Because we want it to be mouth-watering tender, don't we? So the first hour to hour and a half for this size roast, we're going to put it in the oven without the veg and let it cook. And then we'll bring it out and add the veg to it and allow it to cook another hour to hour and a half. And here again, it all depends on the size of your roast. This is just a small roast, one pound and four ounces. So I got a couple of pot holders. We'll get this alone opened up and get this Dutch oven in the oven set at 325 on the middle rack in case you wanted to know and there you go now we can just sit back and then maybe enjoy some of Mr. Tom's videos well we've had it in the oven for right at a little over an hour and this is a small roast so I'm going to check it and see how it's coming Woo! Look at all that steam. Ooh, and we got our official doneness checker here. We're just gonna 
plop that on in there and see if it's starting to pull apart. And you can plainly see it's not. While we got it here, we just turn it on over and place it back in that lovely gravy. Man, it's looking good. Yes, it is. Let me give you a little close-up. Looky there, looky there. Look at all that pop full of gravy. Woo, that's going to be a superstar too. I'm going to be enjoying it for several days. Oh, mashed potatoes, rice, maybe even some egg noodles to spice it on up. But I'm going to go ahead and add the veg now. And we'll continue cooking for another hour to hour and a half. So, we didn't have the camera on, but we added in all of our vegetables all around it and on top of it. And we gave it a little sprinkle of thyme because your potatoes need thyme. We also add some rosemary too. A little more ground black pepper. Can never have enough pepper in my mind and some rosemary but now with the pink salt yeah i'm telling you himalayan pink salt that is so we got it all in there and even we're going to add some mccormick minced garlic too never have enough seasoning there that should do it. We'll just get it all in that gravy. All wetted down. Woo! Because this gravy is going to be another star of this show. Yes, it is. Now, I love my beef. But with beef prices where they're at. I'm doing just like my mama did, my grandmama, and my great-grand. Yeah, they loaded up on those cheap potatoes, carrots, celery. Yeah, a little bit of meat, a lot of veg. You're getting your vitamins, minerals, and filling up your tummy too. So let's get this on back in the oven at 325 for another hour to hour and a half, depending on its doneness. Ooh, here we go. Back in she goes. Now, we can go back and relax for another hour, hour and a half for what we have to, to get it where it just pulls apart with a fork. Well, we let it cook another two whole hours to get tender. So let's get our official tender checker. Yep, calibrated fork put in there and see if it separates. Let's see, oh yeah, look at that. Breaks right apart. That's gonna be all so good. Ooh yeah. So it's done, let's check these potatoes. Oh yeah, fork goes in and break apart just like a baked potato wood. See that fluffy goodness right there? Can you see that? Oh yeah. So all we gotta do now is plate some up. We had a total cooking time of three hours for that little roast with all the veg in there. So there you have it. Let's take a look. So there it is up close. What do you think? Ooh, there's a lot of goodness in that chuck roast. Yep, that's why grandmother called it. Her holiday pot roast. Southern style smothered in gravy. So let's get some out and give it a taste. What do you say? So let's fish us out some of that 
fine roast beef if we can. Ooh, yeah. We don't want a lot. Here we go. We can get her broke apart. Get aside just a little piece. Because it's getting late. Ooh, there we go. Look at that. A little tenderloin, almost. Then we'll reach in and get us some veg. Ooh, right there, too. That should be enough for us for a nice meal. And this will make many meals to come. Let me set this back over on the stove if you don't mind. Woo, look at that goodness right there. That nice piece of roast beef with gravy on top. And all those potatoes, onions, and carrots, all sitting, some fine gravy too. Ooh, you can't beat the southern style. Smothered chuck roast. For the holidays, or any days, and Sunday supper too. But it wouldn't be complete unless we gave it a taste test. So we'll let her cool, and then we'll see how it all came out. Mm-mm-mm. Ooh, that's mighty fine. Yes, it is. Oh, those potatoes are so tender. And so is that roast beast. Or roast beef. So now we gotta pop it in the chomps. And see how it all came out. We're gonna start with a little piece of that roast. Ooh, smothered in gravy. All so fine. It might be hot. Whew. Hold on to your pants, guys and gals. Oh, my lord. Oh, that's spot on. Mm -mm -mm. It's just slap your pants off, goodness, in a one pot meal. But we gotta try the veg. Got a spine carrot, potato too. Give it a little blow. I like the roof of my mouth. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh my lord. Hate to eat in front of y'all. Yes, I do. But, that's what we got to do to prove, as you saw, it's finger licking good. Mm -mm -mm. Oh my. Well, I should make that more often if beef wasn't so high. And I don't buy beef anymore unless it's on manager special or deep sale. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed our little cooking session here in the little old country kitchen in the deep south of Alabama with a little old country engineer. Yep. Hope you'll try this recipe sometimes. And you too can savor the flavor of southern style smothered chuck roast too. And it'll make that day a holiday for you. Maybe that's why Grandma Thompson called it the holiday pot roast. So hey, I've got to get to eating while mine's still warm. So until I, Gracie, the princess of the house, aka our sous chef, the kitty crew, 
Cleo Spooky Speedy, sometimes he Cleo, and Fluffy Muffin, too. See you on that next episode of Mr. Tom's Neighborhood. Y'all take care, stay safe, and may God bless you all as you bless those in your lives. And you know, we love you all, too. Goodbye for now. Ooh, man. That pulls apart so tenderly. I, I got to show this to him. One more time before we go. I mean, look at this. Just take that pork, rotate it, just like that. Mm -mm -mm. Look at there, look at there. That is some beefy, bold flavor. The beef bouillon just adds to it. The garlic, the Worcestershire Shire sauce, rosemary and thyme. Woo, of course, as Gracie would say, it wouldn't be nothing without some pure ground black pepper and some Himalayan pink salt. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Mm -mm -mm. Later, all.